Hi there, Mark here again. Welcome to this video where hopefully I'm going to be restoring my Thunder Dragon. Um, this is what I've done to it. <laughs> you might be surprised to see. I've um, got an old Chevy body on there and um, I've made some changes to the chassis underneath. I'll just show you. So we're going to get rid of this because I've found the old shell, which is here, as you can see. Um, most of the paint's come off. I've tried to get uh, more of it off by scraping it off, but um, I'm going to need some kind of uh, paint remover to get this out. So we'll have a go at that and we'll respray it. Um, not sure exactly yet, but I think I'm going to go with a metallic uh, grey, I think, uh, gunmetal or something like that. So that's that. As you can see, I've um, adapted this to. Um, four shocks so two shocks at the front instead of the one that it used to have there's a load of aluminium plate and so on going on here and the body mounts for the other body uh, I've got some plate there that I'm going to take off that was for the ESC I think um, I've adapted the back I've changed the back shocks again I'm going to try and put all this back to original I found the original three shocks that I'd still got after all these years uh, 30 plus years now so I've um, refurbished those They've been rebuilt and new shock oil in there. They seem to work quite well. So those will be going back on. So this is an original Thunder Dragon, um, which I bought back in the 80s. So it's a good few years old now. Um, I did have to replace the bathtub itself because that cracked through. The typical A5 part at the front broke, so I've made an aluminum bracket there. I think I'll clean that up a bit and paint it black so it looks more like stock. It's a great car, I had a lot of fun with it, but uh, now it's time to put it back to original because I've converted this to four shocks, as you can see. I've now got this beauty, um, which is a proper four shock Terra Scorcher on the same chassis. Um, so I might as well put this back to the three shock and maybe we can get some runs going together and have a bit of fun with them off road. So yeah, what I'm gonna do now then is I'm going to take all this bracketry off, take all the shocks off, get rid of the aluminium pieces. Luckily, with the new Terra Scorcher, I got these. So in the Terra Scorcher kit, you get these extra parts. I think these were some of these for um, the Thunder Dragon. So I'm going to replace all the old plastics on here with the the newer ones I might as well I've got them so I'm going to swap all of those out one of the other things I've got to do is you see I've put these aftermarket wheels on uh, that's not going to work so I found the old wheels and tires we're going to stick those back on I'm going to try and refurb these up a bit because they're a bit scratched I'll show you how I do that and the other thing that's missing is the um, the top cover I've found the uh, the driver's head but uh, if I can't um, get hold of another cover I'm going to make something up and uh, we'll see if we can get a driver figure placed inside the body. As you can see I've got one of the wheels off uh, they seem to wobble quite a bit there's a quite a lot of movement in the uh, in the wheels side to side so I took it off just to check and uh, hopefully you can see this I replaced uh, the bushings with um, metal bearings but I don't know if that's coming across on camera, but as you can see, hopefully, the uh, the bearings are actually worn out. They've only been in there a few years, um, but they are moving quite a lot, so I need to get some new bearings as well. So there's quite a few jobs to do on this. Um, I'll just get on and start uh, removing all this stuff. So while I was fitting the new top arms, I noticed that uh, one of the uh, front C-hubs is completely snapped through. I don't know if you can see there in this light. Um, yeah. So that's snapped clean in half. So uh, I've had to order that part to C3 again. Um, I think it was only about seven or eight quid. So I've got those put on. Um, and I might as well replace all the other plastics as well. I've got the rear wheel carriers. So they can go on. I've got the wheel adapters. And these are the mounts for the front shock. So I'm going to go and uh, put all of these onto the uh, rebuild. So we're making a bit of progress now. I've got the uh, new plastics fitted. And you can see I've got the shocks mounted, so you've got the single front shock. And if you can see in there, I've um, painted that uh, aluminium bracket black and just uh, tidied it up a little bit. It looks a little bit better now. So the front end all seems to be working okay. 
um, luckily I've got the old instruction manual so I could follow that and at the back we've got the two rear shocks on again with the uh, new carriers it's all looking quite good and also I've been working on the wheels um, I said before they're a little bit knocked up um, I don't know if you can probably see in this light quite a bit of damage and quite a lot of scratches on there so this is one that I've had a go at you can see the difference what I've done to this one is um, first of all get some fine grade wet and dry paper this is uh, 3M 800 grade and give the wheel a good rub down with that and it comes out with um, a matte finish like this you can see the difference um, very fine scratches on there but you can get most of the uh, the bumps and knocks out like that and uh, just to finish off get a rag I've got some uh, metal polish I think any kind of metal polish works on plastic and basically it's a bit of graft then it took me I don't know probably about 10 or 15 minutes to get that polish back on but uh, yeah it's not perfect but um, looks uh, certainly a lot better than the old ones so I'll just get the all the four wheels finished and we'll get them mounted on so amazingly after 30 years I've managed to find the original chassis cover or driver figure or both as it is and the original head that came with uh, the Thunder Dragon so yeah as you can see I never bothered painting it all those years ago so uh, now it's time to get some matte black on this paint up the uh, the body figure there and uh, spray the helmet I've already filled the back as you can see just got to rub this down and uh, yeah I'll be back in a bit okay then so uh, here he is painted finally it's only taken 30 years but uh, I'm quite pleased with the way it's come out so as you can see I've gone for a yellow with the helmet and I've sprayed that on and then I've brush I painted his, uh, his suit and his gloves again it's quite tricky with uh, this one because it's got the um, the face mask on if you can see there um, quite tricky to get that painted with the uh, the flesh around the eyes but uh, yeah we got there in the end I'm quite pleased with that you can see um, I've got some black stickers to go on the yellow I like the contrast uh, there's simply uh, the off cuts of uh, you know the uh, decal packs that you get with most uh, Tamiya's on the bottom you'll see like the, the name of the kit that it's for and you get these Tamiya ink and the uh, the two stars uh, yeah I just use those basically I keep all the bits and pieces from uh, left over from a kit build yeah and they, that kind of works quite well I found this RC one that was on one of those parts of the sticker pack and uh, yeah I really like that so that's gone well um, let's move on to the body which hasn't gone so well so here it is yeah you can see there's less of that um, orange paint on but it has been a complete nightmare with uh, the after effects of coronavirus still um, still can't get any Tamiya spares still can't get any paints I couldn't get any paint remover so <clears throat> I tried using this nail polish remover which is acetone I think word of warning don't ever use this to remove polycarbonate paint it, uh, it kind of did work as you can see some of the cotton pads that I used nothing happened at first but with a bit of pressure um, it did actually take off the paint so I had to use a lot of these pads it did come off it looked okay at first but then I don't know if this is going to come across on camera but the Lexan or the polycarbonate has started to cloud uh, in reaction to the acetone so yeah what a nightmare all over I've got this kind of clouding effect as I say I don't know if you can see um, on this camera view but believe me it's absolutely covered in kind of a, a white bloom now I've had a go at scraping most of it off uh, with these hobby knives I've scraped the top layer off so now it's covered in scratches as well great so what I'm hoping is um, if I just wet my finger um, again whether it will come across or not you can see where my finger is the kind of scratches disappear when it's wet so I'm hoping that the paint will have that kind of an effect and fill the scratches I don't know I'm going to give it a quick flat over with some really fine wet and dry get it as best I can it's gonna to have to be a basher guys because these are like hen's teeth to get I had a quick look on the internet and just the original sticker pack uh, one of those was going for 70 plus pounds so uh, it's it's not worth that for me it'll be a basher if nothing else so I'll just make the best I can with it so 
I've uh, been looking for different paints again they're hard to get and I've decided to go with this PS59 I've got half a tin left from a Terra Sculpture build and I think that will kind of go um, with the different blue and yellow so I'm going to give that a go I did manage to get a tin of PS4 which is a similar-ish kind of colour so when this runs out I can always back it with this to give uh, a bit more thickness to the paint uh, that's the plan anyway so wish me luck I'm going to go away rub this down and um, mask off the window and put some paint on so that's the chassis finished I'm uh, really quite pleased with the way it's come out it looks uh, almost as good as new I think yeah so uh, we're all pretty much back to standard you can see there I've fitted a brand new silver can previously I was running a brushless setup in this uh, but I think it was a bit too much for it um, here's the old pinion I don't know if you can see we get that to focus in on that but uh, it's pretty much spikes rather than teeth now um, so I've had to change that and put a new pinion in that's what happens with aluminium pinions and just to show you I had to take the gearbox apart and clean it out because of all the aluminium that's worn off there and uh, this jar shows uh, all the crud that came out of that gearbox I washed it in uh, white spirits all the parts all the gears and uh, it, the white spirits has evaporated and that's what's left so you can see what happens when uh, an aluminium pinion gear wears out anyway so there's a new one in there now as I say the motor is uh, stock as it would have been with the original Thunder Dragon all we need to do now is look at that body shell and here it is well considering as you saw what it was like with all the scratches and the uh, the blooming in it from the uh, reaction to the acetone it's come out pretty good it does look completely different to uh, the silver or the lighter colors that uh, it's supposed to be painted but I kind of like the effect I like the um, the blue and the yellow against that dark blue um, it does look quite nice natural light but uh, you might be able to hear it started raining here in England and uh, I don't think it's going to stop so uh, we'll just have to do with the shots in the workshop at the moment as you can see uh, I had left these parts on the back I've cut them out now so it's more like uh, how it should have been originally so those are gone and I used this really fine I think it's 2500 grade wet or dry paper to get rid of some of the scratches and uh, basically uh, the new paint did its job um, I backed it in silver in the end and not blue just to brighten it up a little bit you might be able to see here I've got a spare piece of Lexan sprayed that black and I've fitted that with some uh, like foam uh, onto the, the body as you can see because this uh, hole didn't look right as I'm not running it with the resistor anymore there was just that empty hole so what I've done is this is an old heat sink from a, a TBLE 02 ESC that uh, I managed to blow up by running it through some water uh, and I put that in there because it kind of fills the void um, it does say caution hot and there's heat sink so even though it doesn't function so all we need to do is uh, put this on the chassis and uh, there we have it okay I know it's not perfect but you know remember it is um, over 30 years old there are a lot of scratches on the outside of the body which obviously the paint won't get rid of I could have a go I suppose at rubbing down with some fine wet and dry and polishing but at the end of the day it's going to be a runner uh, I want to run this thing again I'm really pleased with the way it's come out I quite like the blue I hope you like it what I'm going to do is when we get a bit of decent weather I'll make it out for a run so it will be its first run again <laughs> all these years on and uh, yeah hope you join me on that one so anyway guys um, appreciate you following along I uh, hope you enjoyed it and see you next time Bye.